Um, next up, I want to invite uh, Ben and Dion. Uh, these are some real developers developing real applications. I don't know if they slept last night or not. It doesn't, doesn't look like it, but that's, that's normal for these two. So I'm going to leave the stage and let Derek and, uh, talk with Ben and Dion. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. All right. We're the real developers, huh? Very nice. Hey, How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? Cool. So uh, thanks a lot for inviting us here, Derek and Mark. Uh, have been having a lot of fun with, with Cloud Foundry. We started early on with these guys uh, tinkering with the uh, technology. And Rod talked about the kind of generational things that were happening in the industry. And I think we've kind of uh, you know, really seen this. Uh, we worked uh, in the enterprise Java space. I was the editor-in-chief of the serverside.com, you know, watching Spring come out of the ashes of EJB. And then uh, together on Ajaxian.com, a uh, community site that we founded, we watched kind of the Ajax revolution and see kind of the balance of power go from server to client a little bit. And now it's the world of HTML5 and apps and all of this great stuff. Yeah, Rod talked a little bit about some of the pain that's happening in the server landscape and how that middle tier still has plenty of uh, bad taste in it. But if you look at the client tier, we've sort of got uh, two things happening that we find really interesting. On the one hand, we have browsers we didn't even dream about back in 2005. I don't know if you've been watching the live stream from Mix uh, today, but uh, Microsoft has a new IE10 announcement that's interesting. And then you look at the other browsers that are out on the marketplace, what you can do is really compelling. And then you've got what's happening in the mobile ecosystem, which is equally interesting. But all that translates into a ton of confusion for developers today. If any of you are building client-side apps, um, I, I think you probably feel the same confusion that we feel about how to make sense of all the technologies that are out there. We're constantly talking with developers that really don't even know how to build an app anymore uh, in, in terms of client technologies. There's so much innovation happening. And, uh, and we thought it'd be fun to kind of do something about that. Yeah, so we've decided to throw our hat in the ring again and, uh, and get a developer community going to kind of talk through uh, this kind of new way of, of developing apps. And as we kind of built, thought about building this, this community, we could kind of throw up you know, a WordPress blog, but that doesn't seem right for something that's talking about this you know, new easy, way right? of doing things. It's, it's just too easy. easy. And we've got to like, show off all these cool, great things that browsers are able to do and the great things you're able to do uh, in the cloud. So we decided to build our own uh, kind of <coughs> content managing platform that kind of shows it off uh, and kind of will allow us to kind of demonstrate as we kind of open source the technology uh, how to use these different things that are out there in the browser. And, and you guys made some interesting choices in terms of building this application, correct? Yeah, so um, that's right. When we started to build it, we, we realized right away that we wanted to use not only the latest stuff on the server side, which today would be Node.js if you're doing something in the browser because it lets you run JavaScript on the server as well as the client. We'll talk about why that was so compelling for us. Right. We also wanted to use Rails because we, uh, we'll talk more about why, but we, we found that Rails was just a great CRUD platform, and we had need for that too. And so we needed an environment that let us mix the two together. Um, and so that was one of the requirements that we brought to the table. The other was we really wanted to use Mongo, because if we're going to do JavaScript, we want to do JavaScript end to end. And we don't want to administer Mongo ourselves. We want to just provide it as a service. And that's sort of the third requirement that we had, uh, which is we don't want to be system administrators. We want to spend all of our time focused on end user features. And so we really wanted to find a deployment environment that would just let us take what we've built on our laptop and just shove it in the, in the cloud somewhere without having to worry about anything else. Yeah. And we've known you guys for a while. And, and you know, one of the backstories on, on this engagement was um, you know, everyone kept looking at the demos I was writing and say, Derek, they're too simple. They're not representative of anything real. Find a real app and let's make sure the system runs with that. And you know, I said, oh, well, Ben and Dion are working on this app. You know, show me what you got. And so immediately we got thrown into the concept of a front-end, node-based uh, app server that was you know, vending out both server-side and, and client-side JavaScript, MongoDB as a service, and Rails 3 all kind of put together living in the cloud. And I think, to be, to be fair, when we first started talking about this, we didn't think that it was going to be a very smooth road. And nothing ever is, but were you guys impressed with how easy it was to actually get this thing going? Yeah, totally. I think one key is that um, you mentioned Mongo, and that's listed as a service. We've got 10Gen here. Back in the day, we were super excited. You know, building a content management system, you kind of really want a document store. You don't want a relational database. And so we really wanted to use something like Mongo, and especially because it's you know, JSON. It like really fits us, JSON, JavaScript, all the way through from client uh, to server. And kind of talked to Derek about, you know, we, I guess we can use Red Ear, so my secret, we'd really love to use this Mongo thing. He's like, oh, okay, I'll think about it. And then the next day, uh, type VMC services, and Mongo is there. So I think that really bodes well for the platform and the modularization that, that these guys have been talking out, where people will be able to kind of add their own modules and own services. So can we show you the site real quick? Sure, is of course. Your, is can it, we uh, switch over to the demo box and 
function source, no dub dub. <laughs> oh, sorry. There it is. Oh, we'd like you to show you the source. That's right. Live demos are always fun. <laughs> So you guys actually did build the system, put it up on Cloud Foundry. It's been running, correct? Yep. Okay. So we'll talk more about how we <laughs> built it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can figure out. What yeah, totally. So while you're doing this, I want to talk about one uh, parts of the actual technology stack itself. Um, you know, we work a lot with you know modern web developers, and there's all of this really cool stuff that's out there with Backbone and the like. That's just you know super cool client side. Uh, JavaScript framework, Sencha, Sprout Core, all of this stuff. And developers want to develop uh, applications this way. Um, unfortunately, though, you get into this world where you want to build this app, but uh, it's not going to work for me. If the Google bot comes along, I don't want it to see a script source line. That's OK for Gmail that Google's not going to index. But for my site, I care about SEO. And what about older browsers and mobile browsers? I need to be able to you know, work with the system. And so we partnered with uh, Ryan Eastridge, who's here. And uh, we worked on this really exciting technology that's, that's still very early stage, but, but we're really jazzed about it. It's basically a view server that enables you, the developer, to build in this modern way with uh, client-centric JavaScript. But then on the server, using Node, because it's JavaScript, uh, we have a fake DOM that allows you to automatically snapshot the application that, you, that you've got going. And so what this means to us as developers is we can be super productive doing a client-side application, and then something up there in the server is just going to take care of uh, SEO for us, legacy browsers, all of this stuff automatically. And so if you go to it from uh, that system, you just see a whole set of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you go to it from a rich browser, it's all going to work perfectly. And we're really jazzed to kind of show this off uh, in the future and kind of let people play with it. And notice, let's, go ahead. Oh, let's switch back to the demo machine. I think this is an important deal. Live demos are always fun and always tricky, but what is important about this system was is that the front end system had failed. It had an exception as we're, we've all been trying to tag team this thing and get it running. The system will automatically restart all the c components as best as it can. And the system just told me, it said, hey, I couldn't restart it for some reason. I thought it was in a flapping state. And it said, so I'm going to stop until you tell me what to do. And so as uh, Dion started talking, I said, oh, I said, because I know we have that issue with the coordination on the front end, back end, and, and I know that Ryan and, and you guys are going to tag that. But I simply said, VMC restart it. And it said, oh, OK. And so it was literally back up in two seconds. So as the platform evolves, as your guys' app evolves, uh, you know, live demos are fun, but I actually think this is an important part of what we just did. So we actually do have Eric, it. I, so I'm in awe. You like pivoted from the demo failure and made it into a feature. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't see that very often. I, I, I write so many apps that fail, and trust me, it's, I have to do it. Uh, I remember yeah. nice, nice stagecraft, my friend. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so here's the here's the site, and uh, we have a bunch of different blog stories covering the latest developments in the client space. And uh, we can only really get to four or five blog posts a day. And so, for those of you that want everything, we have a fire hose, which is literally everything that's out there that we're aware of from Twitter and other sources. And then we're also doing really in-depth features from time to time. Uh, this one's really interesting. So we sort of whine about having to support a few different browsers and a few different mobile phones. Netflix has to support over 400 different devices, and these are radically different devices. And so we got to sit down with them and do an in-depth story about how they were able to accomplish this without going crazy. And uh, we're going live with that in about a week. Um, and as Dion mentioned, we've built a platform that lets us sort of target the very latest browsers with uh, compelling features. But at the same time, because we use Node on the back end to do these uh, static snapshots, we can also serve that content up to, to really older browsers and dumber devices that don't have the capability to execute JavaScript. And as developers, we don't even have to think about it. We just target the advanced platforms and the degradation happens automatically. So we're really, really happy about that platform. Working with Cloud Foundry has been a dream. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to work with the environment. You saw the command line tools. Literally, that's the environment we worked with. We developed on our boxes, do a quick command line uh, uh, command, hit enter, deploy to the cloud, and uh, we move on. It's really been a lot of fun, and we're thrilled to be amongst the first tenants of Cloud Foundry. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you guys very, very much. Thanks, sir. And obviously, I don't need to impress the point that that was not a demo. It was running live. That kind of spoke for itself. Um, I'm going to invite Rod back up for some closing comments.